Oh, I've got a weakness. Isn't that cute? Well, how about this? I'm going to overtrain that movement. I'm going to overtrain those muscles involved. I'm going to hit it head on. That weakness is going to get punished. I'm going to get punished. That is exactly what my mentality is right now. I'm sick of this stuff. I implemented the, 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 the deadlifts every day. And even though I, I, I acclimatized to that type of thing, still the volume eludes me. Any sort of volume in the posterior chain, I basically cry like a little baby. The following day, I'm a wreck. Uh, my body feels like I've been one round or half a round with freaking Khabib. So I'm going to hit it head on and I'm going to punish myself. I'm going to hit it heavy. I'm going to hit it often and I'm going to hit it with volume. So what does that mean for Ivan's program everywhere else? Everything else is going to fall off, uh, except the squats, obviously. I'm still going to do the squats, but the sumos, everything else is going to, bench is probably going to fall off as well, depending on how I go. Uh, around these holiday periods, I might not have enough time because of commitments, but I'm going to freaking make enough time to do these RDLs. Happy RDLs, everyone. Um, for those of you that are celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Spend it with your family, your loved ones, your friends. Um, I'm certainly going to do that. I'm going to try to do that. Uh, and I'm going to have some happy RDLs in the mix as well. I'm going to have my cake. I'm going to have my, my food, um, my 15 meals. And I'm sure going to have lots of lots of happy RDLs. Um, today I hit 200 kilos for three sets of five. Yes, it's heavy. No, I'm not. Recovered from the other day. It felt extremely heavy, it felt extremely slow, but I rocked up. I'm gonna force these adaptations. Um, this is not my style usually, uh, but I'm just freaking sick of this lack of conditioning to the posterior chain. I'm sick of it. And this is probably why I have anterior pelvic tilt. This is why my, my gut sticks out, my butt sticks out. I've got that cross syndrome. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, the hell, if I put on pounds and I look at my, my lower back and my lower back is basically at the midline if you look at me from the profile. So I've got this anterior pelvic tilt. Um, I feel like if I hit RDLs, I will hit all the necessary muscles, the adductors, the hamstrings, the glutes, the core, everything should tighten up. Um, I'm, I'm having fun, but it's, it's, it's hard work. It's hard yakka. Um, I just want to develop this thing. One of you fellas said to me, and actually a number of you fellas mentioned the same type of thing. You know, maybe I'm wrong, you guys were saying. Maybe you're wrong about your your hypothesis that your RDL is the weak link. Um, you guys have alluded to how my deadlift number is really, really good. Um, and my RDL number at 220 for, for two the other day is very, very good. Um, so, you, you know, from that perspective, you could say that it's my, it's my strength, um, but I don't have capacity in that movement. So even though I can hit a one rep max that's decent, I still don't have the capacity. Um, and as, as I was saying to a lot of you guys as well, I, th I think one of the reasons I am good in this RDL kind of motion is because my lower back has kind of been conditioned with the ATG uh, squats. One thing that I feel, I might not be correct with this, is that when you go into the bottom position, there needs to be a lot of force through those muscles which are causing you to go into lumbar extension. Um, so you have to kind of stick your butt out in the bottom of the hole to prevent butt wink. Um, I feel the RDL trains that. It trains it very, very well. And so I'm, I hope I'm going to become more comfortable in the back squat and probably in the front squat as well as I progress the RDL. Um, I don't know what the figures are, what the ratios should be when you compare the deadlift to the RDL. And frankly, all of those types of ratios that people come up with, you know, fancy calculators and whatnot, you know, it's very hard to generalize these type of movements for people that are coming in all sorts of sizes and leverages and training history and whatever. Um, I, for some reason, I feel comfortable in the bent over position. Um, I feel quite comfortable in that position. Um, and I feel like if I push that position, then that's going to be a comfortable spot for me in the squat. And also, it's making my hips feel amazing, man. It's honestly making my hips feel uh, really, really good. So that hip pain, that whole complex... Um, that comes to me when I do a lot of pushing and not a lot of pulling. I've, I've kind of, you know, concluded that chapter in my mind 
that any time I do too much pushing and not enough pulling for the lower body, the hip gets upset. So even though the ratio is kind of agreed upon to be three to one pull to push, I would argue that, you know, depending on your loads that you're using for pushing exercise, like the squat, and if, if you do it every single day like me, for months on end, like years on end now, um, you need to be very, very strategic in your approach to your pulling. I don't think it makes sense in my mind to push really, really heavy with the squat. So we're talking 90% of your one rep max on a regular basis. And then you're doing leg curls, which are freaking 10, 20% of your one rep max in terms of your, your deadlift. I don't think that serves it well. I think you need to load the RDL really heavily. One of the things that I was thinking about while I was going through the motion today is clock off. Once again, I think about some of these idols that we all have on a frequent basis. When I do front squats, I think of clock off for whatever reason. It's just burning into my skull. His approach, his demeanor. I think about how he you know, prepares for the lift. Um, and also think about, now, once again, I, I keep butchering this thing. I'm not an Olympic weightlifting uh, coach or, or athlete or anything like that. I think they call it the, the hang snatch from a hang position around the knee. So in a snatch position, hands are, the bars at the knee level. And so, you know, he's deadlifted it up. He's gone down to the knees. He, he's held it there. And from that position, he extends the hips and he goes into the overhead position. I've seen him do some stupid numbers with that position. And to me, when I do the RDL, when I, with the bar, even though I'm not in a snatch position, when I go down with the bar to kind of mid shin, you know, upper third shin, um, I'm thinking about the musculature which are involved for Klokov to do that. And it's, it's all posterior chain. Um, because the, the shins are vertical, I don't think the quads can contribute that much into that, you know, vertical uh, uh, movement of the bar. It needs to be an extension of the of the hips. So the RDL does that, does it really well. Although I'm not doing a powerful movement enough to cause that overspill of, of force for it to go above the, the end point of the hips, I'm not doing that. But if I load enough weight, then I sort of have, you, you could say, a similar type of force output. It feels good to me. My back feels excellent when I do this. My hips feel excellent. My knees feel excellent. Everything feels excellent. Um, which in contrary, when I do lots and lots of squatting, heavy squatting, like say if I was to do 10 sets of three at 80%, something crazy like that. At the end of it, I am like, I don't walk away from the, from the scene feeling as good as I am now after an RDL session. Um, I mean, these sets are freaking heavy, man. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I, Obviously, on the camera, it kind of always looks so raw, but this is hard freaking work, man. I'm fighting, fighting, fighting the lower back to stay flat. Um, the core at the front is flickering. I can, I can feel the contractions on the interior core. Um, I think it was only two days ago now. Two days ago that I did the, or maybe even three days ago that I did a similar type of thing of 200 kilos for, for a number of fives. Um, but I'm going to attack it. I'm going to freaking essentially overtrain. But by the books, for people that say, if, if people were to look at my program, they're going to be like, you're simply overtraining. I don't care. You're overtraining if you are doing everything else that people do. But if you're only doing a freaking RDL and you're only doing a front squat and nothing else, I'm taking all my freaking recovery points and putting it into the RDL. I'm putting it into the RDL. I'm not doing anything else. And so, I don't know. I feel it's going to be adapt or die, you know, and, and the way I know how to auto regulate and I know how to read my body, I'm not going to go through pain, I'm not going to go through tightness, but I'm going to give my best effort on every single day. Um, naturally, I'm going to auto regulate, but, you know, I had a thought to myself, okay, one day, I'm going to do two plates, the next day I'll do three plates. Today, I was thinking about like yesterday, I did three plates. Today, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to do four plates, which works up to 180. I did 180 for a set of five, and I was like, that's a bit too, too easy. Let's go to 200. And that's how 200 came about. So two, three, and then four and a half plates. Um, ideally, I would love to get to five plates for a, for a couple of sets of five. Um, maybe one of these days, I'll throw in a deadlift off the ground to see how that's feeling in the midst of all of this freaking pulling. Um, I feel, I don't know, we all might be different, different leverages, arm lengths, or whatever. But that initial portion of the deadlift off the ground, that 
you know, starting position to about mid shin, exactly where the RDL starts, essentially. That to me, that range of motion is the most taxing because that range of motion puts the lower back in some sort of a freakish strain where maintaining their lumbar extension or, or lumbar kind of neutral spine, it's extremely difficult. The moment the bar gets around mid knee, kind of knee level, midway, or, or even like where the tibial tuberosity is, like that kind of level, um, I feel like it's a good spot for me. I feel really strong. And this is where I feel like if you have really long arms, that position can be extended to maybe mid shin. So it's, it's an interesting thing. So deadlifts, like if I was to do 200 kilos for three sets of five on the deadlift, I think it would be much, much, much more taxing for me. Number one, there's no eccentric portion, so there's no bounce. There's no elastic kind of potential energy stored in my system for me to come out of the hole. It's all dead lifting. Uh, so I feel like this is a nice little workaround to get heavy ass weight into the, into the system without breaking inertia. And I think breaking inertia, and that is, that is the, the true, the true difficult aspect of lifting in my opinion. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, when I make these videos, man, like, uh, I hope you guys are not taking a freaking gospel. This is just me freaking talking about my experience with the barbell. Um, I don't want to come across like I'm some professor, I'm some guru. I have to re reiterate, I've, I've said this number of times, I don't stay, I don't hold any state, national, world, international, no titles have this Ivan, you're never going to find my name on any of those tables. So I'm not somebody to listen to and be like, okay, Ivan is an expert. I'm just a hobbyist, man, that, that has taken a love to this. I've, I've done a lot of watching of videos, a lot of reading on, on various different websites and I'm just basically documenting my journey through this. And so when I say stuff like, I feel like the RDL is, less taxing than the, than the deadlift pull off the floor. That's my experience. You might completely different, right? You might have really long arms that go to freaking your kneecaps when you're standing upright. You know, for you, it might be different. Um, but I think, you know, uh, I think it's important for me to share my, my experience, my, my view. A lot of you guys have messaged me like, Yvonne, I've got the exact same body proportions. I'm taking a real interest in how you think about training, how you approach training, how you approach your problems. So, you know, you know, I'm, I'm happy to make these videos um, for people that, that are getting something out of it. But if, you, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, Ivan's, you know, where's your credentials, man? Like, you're not no one. Look, I, list, I hear you, man. Like, I, I'm just a guy, man. I've said this in the past. I'm not a powerlifter, Olympic lifter, bodybuilder. I'm just a guy that loves to freaking move the bar. That's it. And uh, some of my approaches might be, man, this guy's talking shit or whatever. Um, this is just my way of thinking things through. You know, I might be incorrect about some of these things. Um, but I'm doing it my way and because I'm not part of a team or I don't need to represent anybody, I've got the liberty to do whatever the hell I want to do. Um, so these RDLs, I'm going to head like straight on. I just, I keep thinking to myself, like, I don't know if you guys recall that video. I've been thinking about this video quite a lot. Do you guys remember when I tried 220 kilos on the back squat in the gym and I took two bites at it? So I walked that thing out. There was no problem in the walkout. The pin squats kind of trained me to handle the bar really well on the rack position, walked it out, got to a quarter squat, crapped myself with fear how heavy the thing was and went back up. So as long as my body is vertical, I was comfortable. The moment I started getting to quarter to that parallel squat position, my body started freaking out because I was unable to stabilize the spine under load. So the more I had forward lean, the more my body panicked. Like you can't stabilize this stuff. On the second bite, I kind of just went with it and I basically, to a degree, free fell to the ATG position, held it for a little bit and dropped it. So as I'm doing these RDLs, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I want to be able to hold the 220 kilo, the fire plate RDL in my hands, so it's a bit different, um, in my hands and stabilize that weight when that torso angle is increased. That's what I'm thinking about this. And if, if I get really strong, say I get to freaking six plates, stupid stuff. And I can do six plate RDL. I can imagine the 220 kilo squat feeling freakishly hard when I get to that leaned over position. Obviously, the quads and the adductors and all sorts of things need to kind of come into the picture. But as you guys know, I've said it many, many times over. My biggest fear when I'm in my garage, when I'm training, when I'm wherever, is my spinal health. That's my number one thing. And I feel like investing into something like an RDL or a good morning or 
something along those lines where you are not dead lifting something that's kind of cheaper i feel like it's such a good investment man it's it's like you are banking some checks into something that's not going to fail you um this starts with the spine for me it's always going to start the moment i feel lumbar flexion in a deadlift you guys know i'm going to bail so a lot of my one rep maxes you guys are like man they looked easy you looked easy man because i i i ain't going there man i ain't going there again i've had a shit scared moment once where i almost snapped my spine when i was 2021 and that basically set in motion all of these events for me to end up where i am now i i had to be performance based from that moment on i was never going to have another back injury again and this is stayed with me and so this these art yells man so right up my alley man so right uh, right up my alley guys again i want to say if you're celebrating christmas i want to say merry christmas to everyone happy holidays stay safe we live in a weird weird world right now um just take care of each other stay safe keep training and uh, i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out